Liturgy of the Word for September 15, 2020. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who renews the world through mysteries beyond all telling, grant, we pray, that your church may be guided by your eternal design. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and variety of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. Keep me safe, O God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. My happiness lies in you alone. My happiness lies in you alone. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight, since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you, I will always serve you, I will always keep you in my sight. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even in safety shall my body rest. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. O Lord, you 
are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. You will show me the path of life the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, at your right hand, happiness forever. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you, I will always serve you, I will always keep you in my sight. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrows which is, I think, for many people, especially some that I have known in my own life, a very powerful feast within the church. It is one of a number of times in which we honor Mary and what she represents, what certainly she contributed in a profound way to our understanding of faith and of God and the continued way in which we do that. I think what makes this particular time very poignant this occasion within the church is that you and I do in the course of our lives face our share of sorrows, our sense of losses, a profound sense perhaps of grief or sadness, whatever we may wish to call that. It's very wonderful to know that there is a woman who exists now throughout all of the rest of time who can identify with those sorrows, who in her own way as a human experienced certainly those sorrows. But Mary also experienced ostensibly in her life great joy. So there is that balance there. And we certainly can turn to her as a way to grow closer to Christ and to God. Let us do so today. And if not for ourselves, perhaps for those that we know who are struggling or suffering in any way, those who are trapped in great grief, or who, for whom life is, in many ways, a great series of burdens and hardships. And with faith not only in the Blessed Virgin Mary, but also in a God who always loves us, we offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our church, that on a global level and on a local level, it will be a safe and nurturing place for all people, especially those who are in great need of comfort and consolation. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for those who in many ways are perhaps mourning and being sorrowful for different things than they may have known before. The loss of people during COVID, the loss of a way of life, the loss of employment, and many other things. That indeed we can be agents of comfort just like Mary is. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a continued emphasis on the needs of all people who are at the margins of our world, those that we identify as minorities and often in turn as somehow being less than, that indeed there will always be justice for them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our farmers, all those who work the land, that this time of harvest and this fall will be a productive one. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick in any way, shape, or form, 
and that they will have the access to the care and to the comfort that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who have died. And we remember, perhaps especially on these days, anyone we have known who had a special devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, our faith is rich in so many ways, and there are opportunities within it in which we can connect and go deeper, deeper into mysteries that color our realities. Our Lady of Sorrows is indeed one of these, and it speaks to Mary's incredible compassion and willingness to always do your will. We pray that we will also always respond to your will, and that we will also respond to those who are at this time mourning or suffering in any way. And we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.